This is our shoe rack. And it's not even a shoe rack, it's just a bench that I built like 400 videos ago. Today, we're gonna fix this mess. We're gonna build an actual shoe rack with multiple levels, built-in storage, and a bench. And today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. By the way, this isn't even close to all the shoes that we have. This is just our everyday footwear. We got a whole closet full of shoes. We're shoe people here at the Make Something Else. But we'll worry about the closet in another video. This is gonna be a good one. This is gonna have two levels of shoe holding technology plus a bench on the top. I think the top is gonna to open up and there's gonna be more places to put stuff. Place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. I have these hickory boards right here which came from a local farmer. As you can tell by the crazy low prices on there. They've been drying for a year. They hopefully are good. Uh, they're nice and thick. Beautiful pieces of hickory. Uh, there are some checks that I gotta work around. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start planing them down, milling them up, getting them ready for this. I'm thinking one inch thick. Daniel, does that sound good? One inch thick? One inch is good. This is a workout. They're all twisted. And so I got them on the sled here with wedges, trying to get that twist out and they're heavy. I've got my slabs milled down so they're flat on both sides. This looks like way too much wood for this project, but the problem is it needs to be 14 inches wide. None of them have that depth. So I gotta piece things together to do that. Plus I gotta work around these checks. Took a lot of work, but we got all the checks cut out of there and all the pieces that, uh, that just aren't very good looking. And we ended up with some beautiful, beautiful hickory and the grain matching is almost dead on perfect. You're not even gonna see the glue line. So I'm really happy about that. It's crazy that this bench is like 50 inches wide and only 19 inches tall and it's taken four hickory slabs to do this. I feel like there's a lot of waste it's all good, it's all good. I feel like there's a lot of waste, but I'm keeping all the pieces that I cut off and I think I can make some bowls out of it on the lathe and just do little what ofs. Or at least I got some good firewood. Oh, damn it. All my new shoes, look at this, look at it. These are the new Donald Glover designed New Balance shoes. I just, I, I just, I just got glue on there. Our glue up is done for the two side pieces. Now it's time to go rip it to width over at the table saw, plane it once again to make it all nice and even and cut it to size. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. It looks like one board. It is just a couple millimeters over an inch thick. Beautiful, beautiful. I got the two side pieces cut. There's going to be two levels for shoes to go on and I decided I'm going to use some electrical conduit for this. Stuff is fairly cheap, it's nice and rigid. So the next thing I need to do is cut. I want four on the bottom and then four in the middle. That was a workout, nice and shiny. Daniel says, galvanized steel is toxic. So I guess, be careful, protect your neck. So I went ahead and cut a front rail and a back rail and a groove in each one of those to hold a bottom. The back rail is wider than the front rail because the front rail only has so much room because I need places to get the shoe in. And I wanted the back rail a little bit wider for a little bit more 
joinery strength because since it is going to be a bench, it needs to be super stable. I'm hoping between all the, the conduit pieces and these two pieces here that it is stable. If it is not, that is okay. We can go and repair it. I know a really good woodworker. The top part is going to hinge open and then this would be a little place for me to put more of my stuff, which allows me to buy more stuff because now I have a place to put my stuff. We have to do something special with the holes for the conduit because of the bit sizes that I have. Three quarter was a little bit too big and loose and then the next size down, whatever the heck that was, is too small. So we took some conduit and then I cut some slits into the end and then sanded uh, like a little cone shape in there and then that allows us to pound that in for a perfect fit. So this test piece worked great. So now I'm gonna go take all my conduit pieces and then cut some slots, slits. Sl I went ahead and shellacked the inside because that's gonna be hard to do later. Throwing in a little bit of glue. This is, this could be tough. This could be tough. The stressful part is coming. Oh boy. Will it fit? So this was supposed to be the easiest part of the project is making the top for this. I thought I had the wood to do this. It turns out it's like a half inch too short. It's actually, it's less than a half inch. It's probably a quarter of an inch too short. You know what I should do, Daniel? I should put up some sort of quote on the screen right now about planning. My favorite place in town to get hickory is Kencraft. They're actually closed this week because they're in Atlanta for some big woodworking show. So I can't just go to the store and get more hickory. So I'm going to make this a lot more complicated and a lot more fun. I'm going to do a plywood top and I am going to veneer it with veneers that I'm going to make from this board. I can resaw this into nice thin strips, work with some sort of pattern, and we'll be good to go. So, I thought we were almost done. We got a lot more work to do. Everything's an experiment. Rule four, Daniel. Rule four. I resawed all my veneers over at the bandsaw and then I took a photo of one and brought that into Adobe Illustrator to play with some different patterns. I came up with this herringbone pattern which uses the sapwood to kind of separate things so we're going to try to achieve that. We have really thick sides and so I don't have any plywood thick enough that's going to look good so I am going to double up two sheets of plywood and then veneer both sides. I drew a line on the overhang of all the pieces and so now I got to flip it over and cut that excess off because we can't have these sharp corners going into the vacuum bag. I was so bummed 
when I didn't have enough wood for the top, but that forced us to get a little creative. And now the project is even better. There's such a crazy range of emotions that you, I always go through in any woodworking project, but uh, I'm really excited now after being super bummed just like an hour ago. While that is drying in the bag, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. For nine years of my life, I was a professional web developer and somehow I figured out how to hack life and make crazy woodworking projects like this for a living. And now I don't have to deal with the stress of the back end of a website thanks to Squarespace. And I've been using Squarespace long before they were a sponsor. As a one person business, I could not develop a website and shoot video and edit the video and design projects. My friend Jordan turned me on to Squarespace and I haven't looked back. And now they've been a long time sponsor. The great thing about Squarespace is you don't have to worry about the code, the back end, the cloud, any of that icky stuff. You can just focus on what you're good at. With Squarespace, if needed, you could have a password protected members only website. You could bring in all of your social media feeds so everything is in one central place. You're probably like me and you make stuff and you enjoy making stuff and you enjoy sharing what you make. And so you can take photos of what you do and then just have a beautiful gallery of your work. And there's a lot of galleries to choose from with Squarespace. It's super easy to use. Visit squarespace.com and and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for allowing me to experiment and come up with these crazy woodworking projects. I edge banded the top with some more hickory, shellacked the whole thing, threw on a hinge, and this came out absolutely amazing. I am in love with this. If you like this video, hit that like button. Please subscribe. You're definitely gonna like this video down here. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.